more time. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I'm just waiting on notification to go through. Okay, perfect. All right. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest back with us um, who's going to give us some powerful information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than Student Minister Abdul Muhammad. First of all, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, my brother. Uh, uh, yes, sir. We have uh, my sister Naima sends the greetings. Thank you all. Thank you, everybody who's um, watching uh, live. We got so many comments and responses and texts and emails and DMs and inboxes from who is Master Fard Muhammad that we had to come back this uh, time to answer one of his students, who is the honorable Elijah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we have uh, Brother Abdul who's going to explain that to us today. Well, the first question we want to know is, um, in layman's term, Brother Abdul, who would you say is the uh, most honorable Elijah Muhammad? Uh, brother, uh, thank you for having me on your show. Bro. Okay, because brother, first of all, thank you for having me on your show. I definitely take it as an honor to be here. I think the last time we were together, that that was a great show of interview by, all, by the grace of Allah. So I'm definitely glad to talk about uh, the number one student of Master Fahd Muhammad, the most honorable Elijah. And brother, if you ask, so if you ask who he is, it depends on who you're asking, right? Yes, uh, sir. If you ask me, who is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? Then I would tell you that he is the Messiah and he is the exalted Christ. That is what I would tell you if you ask me. So different people are going to tell you different things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, we could say that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the father of Islam in America because he is that, right? Mm, mm. Say that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the father of black consciousness because he is that. But those things, uh, you know, are not the title that uh, God would use to describe him, even though those things are true, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you ask me, he is the Messiah and the exalted Christ. No Praise question. Jesus. Yes, sir. And what well, Abdul, I'm a, a huge boxing fan. Yes, sir. Uh, I like to fight. I like fighting. I mean, you were speaking of martial arts earlier. Muhammad Ali, Right, so the movie, everybody, you know, Muhammad, uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was a, a pivotal part of his life and his, uh, you know, his rise to being the champion. How important was their their relationship, and how did that impact the world of knowing who the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was? So, oh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is known by his students. Every great teacher is known by his students, and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is no different. Muhammad Ali uh, was one of the students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, sir. Uh, he is the one that gave Muhammad Ali and all of us courage to stand up against white supremacy, uh, to fight back against black inferiority. So when you go back, see, now we can go and look at the interviews that Muhammad Ali did when he was in the nation uh, under the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And Muhammad Ali was so strong and so sharp but this man was only a student. When they asked him, uh, you know, was the word, you know, so let me say this, brother, because in quote unquote popular culture, the way they depict the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is a caricature of who he really is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a caricature, you know, when you go to the park or you go to the, uh, like here we have Navy Pier and they have the man that draws a little cartoon, you sit down paying the money and he draws something that looks like you, right? Yes, sir. It looks like it has, it may have your facial expressions, but it doesn't look exactly like you, right? Yes, sir. In your wallet, it couldn't be on your driver's license, right? That the caricature that the man drew of you couldn't does not prop properly represent you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so when you have a caricature, you have gross distortions, right? And then you have some truth mixed in with that, right? Yes, so the, sir. Yes, sir. Caricature might get you a smile, right? 
but then he might make your head oversized, right? Or if I have on a bow tie, rather than just drawing a regular bow tie, he may draw a big clown bow tie, right? <laughs> so that, that's not me, right? And, and nobody with any sense would look at a caricature and say, yeah, that's you. They, they know it's like, this is like uh, something that's funny, right? So every representation in uh, the media of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is a caricature of who this man really is. Mm. They have not represented him for who he really is. And the reason is that there's a reason. So there's a motive behind everything that the enemy does. And the motive is because the enemy knows that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the one that produced Malcolm X. Malcolm was just a student. And when Malcolm came and heard the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, then he became a force to reckon with in the world, right? So that's one. Then uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught uh, Cassius Clay, right? And Cassius Clay, who was a boxer, who loved his people, who wanted to change things, but didn't have the knowledge to uh, battle uh, Satan, right? He didn't have that knowledge. He got that knowledge from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So he made Malcolm. He made uh, Brother Muhammad Ali, right? He made uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And those are the big, bright lights that all of us look at, right? Yes, but, sir. But we, what we don't see is all of the other lights and the other influence that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad had on the thinking, not just of Black people, but people all over the world, right? Yes, so is, this is what has been hidden about who this man really is. So in order to keep people away, why, do, why would they want to keep him away? Because what he teaches frees the people from the control of Satan. So if Satan is wise, right, what happened to Malcolm? Malcolm, when he got the teachings, he became free, right? And when he became free, then he became a threat, right? What happened to Muhammad Ali? When Muhammad Ali got the teachings, every, every entertainer, not entertainment, let me take that back. Every sports figure, right? They owe Muhammad Ali and really the most honorable Elijah Muhammad a debt of gratitude. Why? Because brother, back then they would pay these people like Jim Brown. Ask Jim Brown. Jim Brown was getting paid $50,000 a year and he's playing in the NFL. What are we talking about? <laughs> it was because all of that was controlled by white people and black people for the most part, there were some exceptions, but for the most part, we did not have the power to challenge white authority. So we just accepted whatever they said, right? So when they came to Muhammad Ali, the mob, they said, look, if you don't do what we say, then we're gonna shoot your kneecaps, kneecaps out. And Muhammad Ali went to the most high realized Muhammad and said, dear holy apostle. They said, if, if I don't do what they say, they're gonna shoot my kneecaps out. And the most high realized Muhammad's response was, well, brother, tell them that they got kneecaps too. So when black, now that's just Muhammad Ali, but brother, I'm telling you, from 1930, when Master Father Muhammad was here and the most harm Elijah Muhammad was being taught, I, you can't even imagine from the thirties, right? Just, I, we can't even like, uh, we live in today's time. We could not imagine what the oppression was like in the thirties, right? Forties, fifties, right? Yes, sir. And, but in the thirties, 40s and 50s, the followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad were standing up against white supremacy. And I know it blew white folks' mind. I know when the police tried to talk to us the same way they talked to black folks still to this day, and we did not accept that. And when they tried to fight us and we fought them back, and when they pulled their guns and dropped it and got popped, I know that that just blew their mind, right? Because there were no black people in America like this into the presence of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So his teaching, right? What does he teach? He teaches the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self, but he also teaches the knowledge of Satan and the knowledge of the devil, right? So his teaching frees us from white people's control. So this is why the enemy in any cultural representation of the nation of Malcolm, Muhammad Ali, anybody, right? They make up this, these stories, right, uh, which are lies about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and misrepresent him 
So if you watch the movie Muhammad Ali, they try to make it seem like, man, the nation trying to get your money. Well, if, 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 if it wasn't for the nation, right? The reason that Muhammad Ali was able to get money like that is because he had the FOI to protect him from the mob. So now that cleared the way for him to make some real money. And then when the other athletes saw like, damn, Muhammad Ali getting bread, right? Then they started to demand more money. So all of these brothers and sisters owe Muhammad Ali and really the most honorable Elijah Muhammad a debt of gratitude because it's our lack of fear of the white man that allowed us to be free from their control. Let me give you another example. Everybody that's in prison, we got a, a nation of black and brown people in prison right now, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whoever's in prison right now, you have the right to have whatever religious scripture that you want in the prison that you're in right now. If you were Jehovah Witness, you can have the Jehovah Witness Bible, right? If you are a Muslim, you can have the Holy Quran. If you are Jewish, you can have a Talmud. Whatever, whatever. if you are Rastafari, you can have that. If you are Hindu, you can have whatever the Hindus read. I used to know the name of it. I can't recall it right now. Whatever yes, your religious scripture is, if you are 5%er, you can have the lessons. Whatever your religious it, religion is, right now, you have the right. Not only that, if you have a special diet, in prison. Like if you're a seven-day Adventist and you're a vegetarian, they got to feed you the food of the seven-day Adventist. If you this, you that, you a roster, you a vegetarian, whatever it is, you have to have that and you have to have a time in that in the day or in the week where you could exercise your religious service and you also have the right to refuse uh, any type of medical experimentation because that's where they do a lot of experiments. But now the question is, why does everybody have those rights today? The Jehovah Witness didn't fight for that. The, the Rastas didn't fight for that. The five percenters, the so-called Orthodox Muslims, none of them fought for those rights. It was the nation of Islam, the followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad who were in prison and fought and were beat and suffered and went to court and sued these white people all over the country so that we could have the right to exercise our religion in the prison. And when we won that right, guess what? Everybody else won that right. Everybody in prison who is exercising their religious freedom in prison owes a debt of gratitude to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and his followers because we were the ones that were unafraid to stand up against the white man and his oppression. All of you who have independent schools, right? You homeschool your children, right? You took your, your, you were smart. You took your children out of the white man's school where they were being miseducated, told that Columbus discovered America, told about Santa Claus, told about the Easter Bunny, told about the leprechauns, right? Wearing green on St. Patrick's Day so they won't get pinched, right? <laughs> you were smart enough, right? To take your children out of the public food system of the enemy and then you put them in an independent black school, right? Or you homeschool them. Now, you have that right today, not because the Catholics fought for that, not because Jehovah Witness fought for that, not because Seven Day Adventists fought for that, not because Orthodox Muslims, Sunni, Shiite, whatever it is, not because they fought for that, right? The ones who fought for that was the nation of Islam, the followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. They came to our school, they raided our school, they said they were gonna arrest the teachers. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said, well, I'm their teacher, so instead of arresting them, arrest me. They wanted to charge him with contributing to the delinquency of, a, of minors, right? This is in the 30s. And when they came to the school and saw how disciplined the children were in the school, then the enemy backed up. So now, what am I saying, brother? The representation of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in the media is a caricature of who this man really is. And the reason that the enemy is so intent on making sure it's a caricature is so that the people won't gravitate to the real man who is responsible for Malcolm X, who's responsible for Muhammad Ali, who's responsible for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who's responsible for Abdullah Muhammad. And that Minister Abdullah Muhammad on the West Coast 
was there when the Black Panthers wrote the 10 point program that they copied off the back page of Muhammad Speaks newspaper. So what are we talking about? Every representation of this great man in the media that's controlled by the enemy is a caricature of who he really is. I watched the Godfather, not uh, the Godfather of Harlem, brother. I'm not even gonna get into it, but it's a caricature of who this man really is and the great work that Allah allowed the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to do among us. So I'm, I'm gonna end it right there, my brother. Excellent, praise be to Allah. People bear witness going off in the comments. Thank you all. I mean, everybody sees Mr. Mariah, Brother James Williams, uh, my sister Naima, Brother Ronald sends agrees. There are so many people are sending, sending, you, sending you love. Excellent. Can we go back to the um, the the schools, Brother Abdul, the uh, independent schools? Yes, sir. The price that uh, the Most High Elijah Muhammad and his followers had to pay for independent schooling um, is that something that should be brought back up like you just did now? For everybody who has independence, is that something that we should, you know, you know, stress to the new people? I think we should absolutely bring those things because I mean, you know, I love black people, brother. I really do, and it's not a competition. You know what I'm saying? It's like we're not like we're not comp competing with Marcus Garvey or any other black person. Like I love all of them. Like every black person that was truly for black people. I love them. Like you ain't got to be in the nation and wear a boat. None of that. Like, but so. But I do think that if we don't tell our story, then it's not gonna get told. The enemy is not gonna tell our story. And there are certain black people because they're, they're envious of the success that the nation has had uh, for the last 90 years, they're not going to tell that story either. So the only way that story is going to be told is if we tell our own story. And so we have to tell it, you know. Beautiful, praise be to Allah. Uh, one of the questions, and thank you everybody for watching the People's Podcast. One of the questions I wanted to know is, how was the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad able to do all of this and not be physically harmed? And, and from the 30s Man, to 1975. Nice. So, uh, see, brother, we're Muslims. We believe in Allah and we believe in his divine protection, right? The Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad worked among us for 44 years. And he was hated by the enemy. And, but the enemy, you read the FBI files on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, they admit right there in the FBI file, right? They did everything within their power. And I need you to think, I need the listeners to think. You're talking about the most powerful government on the planet. Yes, sir. Unlimited financial resources, right? Said that they did everything within their power to destroy the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but everything that they did failed. That's what they said, right? So what, what are, you know, what are some of the things they did? I know in 1959, when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad went to Mecca, the enemy heard, you know, cause they tapping his phone, right? They start tapping his phone in, in January of 1956. Mm. So when he was gonna go to Mecca in 1959, they tried to stop him from going to Mecca, right? They did everything within their power to stop him from going to Mecca. But guess what? He still went to Mecca. We got the pictures, right? He went all over the, uh, what is called the Middle East, right? But they did try to stop him. The enemy, so you hear people say to this day, oh man, you know, the nation of Islam, they're not real Muslims, right? They're not real Muslims. So where did that come from? That is a lie that, because the Muslim Elijah Muhammad had a great relationship with the Muslim world. But when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad decided to go to Mecca, right? This is when the FBI and the CIA spread the lie to the Muslim world that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the nation of Islam are not real Muslims. So the lie that we're not real Muslims didn't even come from Muslims. It came from the FBI and the CIA. So now you hear so-called Muslims saying it and they don't even know where it originated. They just think, oh man, they're not real Muslims. And that is a lie that was, was uh, used by the FBI and the CIA in the feeble attempt to derail the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's trip in the Muslim world. Uh, but, uh, like, but like I'm saying, brother, they did everything. See, brother, in the Holy Quran, right? Allah does not, it, so this, listen what Allah says in the Holy Quran. Thus, and I think it's, it's in chapter six. 
Thus did I make for every prophet an enemy. Yes, sir. Devils from among men and jinn. So now Allah takes full credit for the enemy that the prophets had and have. He takes credit for that right there in the Holy Quran. So now if Allah raises a prophet and then raises the prophet's opposition, then Allah has the power to protect him, the prophet, from the opposition that he raised. And the opposition is only to make the prophet or messenger stronger. That's the only reason for the opposition. So now Allah is in control of that. So the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is not a prophet. Don't, don't get it twisted because I know people in the comments, oh man, I thought Muhammad was the last prophet. He was. We know the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is not a prophet. He's so much greater well, what, than a prophet. He is the fulfillment of what the prophets prophesied would come at the end of the time. He fulfills that. So yes, by fulfilling what the prophets wrote about the Messiah, then he verifies them and seals them as prophets, as we're taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, so brother, the enemy did everything within their power to stop the most armed Elijah Muhammad, to stop the nation of Islam, to stop the rise of black people, and they failed. So he was not harmed in the 44 years uh, that he was among us. In fact, before he left, the enemy was honoring him all over the uh, United States um because of the great work that he did that they could not stop but they did everything within their power to derail this man's work praise be to Allah. excellent excellent boom and i'll say this even though i know we're going to do an interview on the minister it's the same with the honorable minister louis farrakhan the enemy has done everything in their power to stop the honorable minister louis farrakhan and everything that they have done has failed and the enemy today, this just shows you the power of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Here's this man's student. Yes, sir. He's his student. He ain't even a chief man, right? Just a student. And he leaves his student. And the enemy that he leaves his student with is greater today than in the day of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm just putting it out there. The enemy today, right? is a greater threat than the enemy was in the day of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. How do you know? Because technology has advanced so much. Absolutely. Right? And because technology has advanced so much, it has given the enemy even more power, right? But now he don't have no power over God's man. So even though the enemy has more power, more wealth, more technology, more ways to spy, more ways to disrupt, more tools, at his disposal and he uses all those tools against a student and he can't even defeat the student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad come on the holy quran says weak is the invoker and weak is the invoke yes sir yes sir praise be to Allah beautiful so many people so many people are commenting and showing love thank you very much boom I want to I want to ask about the picture I used for a flyer was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad with uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. How how important was that meeting and what transpired? Uh, how do you think that the uh, history transpired, like took place after Dr. Martin Luther King got to meet the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? Brother, that meeting was extremely important because so if you read COINTELPRO, right? And let me just say this, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, Martin Luther King, they met more than one time. I think they met three times. Mm -hmm. uh, but that meeting was critical because if you read the COINTELPRO, uh, they had four goals of COINTELPRO. But one of the goals was to prevent the rise of a Messiah who could unify and electrify the Black movement. The goal of the enemy has always to been to keep us fighting in, with one another, right? Keep us at odds with one another. Even today, like we, we've made it and taken it and it's become a thing of its own, but we're fighting with one another uh, and our people are dying in the street, but this is what the enemy wanted. So when they saw Martin Luther King, right? And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now Martin Luther King Jr. was a powerful orator and organizer and civil rights leader. This is just, you can't take this away from our brother. Even if you disagree with nonviolence, which I absolutely disagree with, right? 
because <laughs> and, no, and we're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna sing no songs. We're not gonna hold hands. We're yes, not gonna sir. Hold together, you get knocked out. Period. Point blank. Right. Come on, walk by. Now, even if you don't agree with nonviolence and that methodology, you can't take away the uh, organizing skill, right? Or the great oratory that Martin Luther King Jr. exhibited. So now the, the enemy knowing the, the power of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and how he could take a man and make him a world leader by, you know, or whatever, by giving him the knowledge of God and knowledge of self, they didn't want that union to happen. And, but I mean, and I'm saying, and I'm saying it across the board, they didn't want no black people coming together, right? J. Edgar Hoover said the greatest threat to America is black unity. So they didn't want any black people coming together, right? But now when you have a man who is uh, a teacher, like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and frees the minds of the people, then you absolutely do not want anybody to unite with that man because then we will be free because he has the program that frees us and the teachings that free us from the control of the enemy. So when you see, right? Martin Luther King Jr., as he grew, as we all grow, we all evolve, right? And he was exposed to what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught. He stopped using the word Negro, right? And started using the word Black to refer to our people, right? The, mo the, the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, also started to talk about how we need to produce economics and not just only vote, right, or only go after civil rights, but that we need economics, right? Straight from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Martin Luther King Jr. started to talk about how the United States government owes black people reparations and that he's coming to collect the check. Now, this is the Martin Luther King Jr. after he met with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, in Chicago. And because, and so, so because brother, what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches is for all of us, right? It's not just for the brothers and sisters in the nation. It's for everybody and people all over the world have been impacted and influenced. I'm gonna give you an example. There's a brother by the name of James Cone, right? James Cone is a famous preacher and he is the founder of what is called Black Theology, right? So right here in Atlanta where you are, there's a church called the Shrine of the Black Madonna, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I visited the Shrine of the Black Madonna. I think their headquarters is in Houston, right? Um, and I know, I don't know who's over the Shrine of the Black Madonna now, uh, but when I visited the Shrine of the Black Madonna, it was uh, Reverend Jeremoji, right? Mm. So now you, we have a church here in Chicago called Trinity United Methodist Church, right around the corner from where I live. And uh, this is one of the churches, and there are many churches that teach black theology, right? So now, but the originator of black theology, Brother James Cone, how did he come up with black theology? He just sat down one day and said, I'm, a, I'm just going, you know. No, he was a Christian preacher who got into debates with Malcolm X and lost. Malcolm would bring so many arguments that could not be defeated, like all of us, right? That this brother couldn't defeat the argument. So then he developed what is called black theology. So now you have churches and preachers all over the country, right? All over the world that teach the brother in Washington, DC, um, brother Willie Wilson, right? Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Theology, what do we got? You go to this church, it's a black Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> James Cone, right? But it was James Cone who was debating Malcolm X and couldn't win. And it was Malcolm X who was taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and given an argument that couldn't be defeated. And he got it from God himself. So now this is the influence of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So what do I look like if I go to Trinity? Those are my brothers and sisters over there, right? That's the church that that Reverend, that's the church that Barack Obama went to, right? I may lose some cool points by saying that. But <laughs> the pastor of the former pastor of Trinity was a student of black theology. So what do, and, and, and Jeremiah Wright and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan are close friends. Yes, sir. What are we like? We're all we're we're brothers. Like those are my brothers at Trinity. Those are my brothers 
at Willie Wilson Church. Those are my brothers and sisters at the Shrine of the Black Madonna because the root of everything is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So now what do we get though? We get a caricature of who this man really is in the mainstream media. They're not gonna tell you the truth about this man because if you knew the truth, then the truth would do what? As Jesus says in the Bible, John chapter eight, it, I will, uh, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, the enemy don't want you to be free. So this is why they will not tell you the truth about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because what he teaches frees us from their control. Praise be to Allah. Excellent, excellent. So many people giving comments and please continue to like, share, and subscribe to People's Podcast, to the People's Podcast. Okay, my next question for you, Brother Abdul, is the, I want to go back to the uh, FBI, right? Because a lot of people who say like, you know, Jesus and the, um, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, the new Black Panther uh, movie about uh, Fred Hampton and how many agents were around. How was the, uh, and infiltrated so many uh, organizations, especially black organizations, how was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad able to be effective, surrounded by so much government aid, agents and, you know, and the FBI and stuff? What I'm saying, the most, like, I know some people can't, it's hard for you to understand that God is actually with us, with yes, black sir. people. Yes, sir. You know, oppressed people of the world, right? That God taught the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that God protected him, that God preserved him. I know that they may, that may be hard for you to die to this, but that is exactly what it is. Because every black organization, right, during that time was destroyed by the FBI, every last one of them. The only organization that the FBI could not destroy was the Nation of Islam. They tried, they did everything within their power. It wasn't until the most honorable Elijah Muhammad departed that they were able to do their plan to destroy the nation of Islam, right? So now, the, 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 so here's the challenge, right? That I want y'all to think about. If you look at the accomplishments of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? Which are great, we can talk about those. But the question is, who was he working with? He was working with Negroes. I work with black people, some of you work with black people. Because we've been destroyed mentally, right? Yes, you can't build anything with us. You can't build a nation. You can't build a civilization because the the uh, Negro mentality, right? The crabs in the barrel. We all talk about it, right? That destroys anything that you're trying to build. So before you can talk about building something with us, a people who've been destroyed, you first have to reform those people, right? You first have to change them from what the white man made them, right? Which is something that is not useful for themselves into what God wants them to be. The, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, not only did he have the greatest opposition of any man, he also had the greatest work to reform the mind of black people. He had the greatest opposition. He had the greatest work to do of reformation, right? Yes, and sir. the greatest opposition and the greatest work to do he was able to produce a work that nobody has been able to match since. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And while he was doing the greatest work in the face of the greatest opposition with the people who had been completely destroyed and needed to be reformed, right? He also had the enemy trying to take his life. He also had envious Black people trying to take his life. He also had the FBI and all these other people all around him plotting to destroy every single thing that he was trying to do. So now we hear about the, so let me give you an example. When the FBI found out that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad would, if when, when there were conflicts with the police and there were many, right? When they found out that he was the type of leader that would hire a lawyer and go to court and fight the white man for what he did, right? Which that's the type of leader he is because we're not afraid of them. Yes, sir. So, but now the FBI took that, right? And they uh, encouraged police all around the country to start attacking the Muslims. So this is how the brothers in Los Angeles, right? Yes, why, sir. Let's go see, we, we just saw the brother get killed, but we didn't know that behind the Los Angeles police was the FBI that directed police all over the country 
to attack the Muslims, knowing that we would fight back, knowing that we would uh, fight back. That's what I'm going to say. I don't want to say another word. Knowing that we would, And then when we go to court, knowing that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad would hire lawyers to defend the brothers, their goal was to financially break the nation of Islam by keeping us in court all over the country. So now this is the plan of the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. But the question is, did it work? And the answer is absolutely. The nation grew by leaps and bounds. <laughs> is the spirit of God was among the people. And when they saw the Muslims were unafraid to defend themselves in the face of police brutality, then that caused the people to support us even more. So what does the Holy Quran say? The Holy Quran says the devil plans. Should have said the FBI, but it says the devil. <laughs> and Allah is the best of planners. So brother, everything that the enemy did, everything, and they did so many things to destroy the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, everything that they did failed, brother. Everything. Beautiful. And you're getting so many comments, brother Abdul. I want to um, have a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast, but I want to come right back to brother Abdul because I'm I want to talk about the uh, picture of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, uh, de dealing with the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad being arrested. I want to talk about that and, and how um, how he handled that as a leader, and how and how we the, the followers of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad handled that as well. But one second, but I do I want to give a quick sixty second commercial break to all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. If you are at uh, home or in your car, your stimulus check just dropped. Your taxes just hit and you want to be a sponsor or a donor of the People's Podcast, please cash at the People's Podcast. We are greatly appreciated for all of your uh, um, your promotion. I mean, all of your um, sponsors. Hold on one second. Here we go. Boom. Here we go. And I want to give a special shout out to all of the people who are behind the scenes sponsors and donors who don't like, who don't have a business, but they just show love. I appreciate every every message that you give. This is just for keep going good, keep doing good, Josh. That means a lot to me. My brother Rashad, street premiere media production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Thank you very much, brother Rashad. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book, both of which are on Amazon. Make sure you all go get that. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. We love our tiny dancers. Um, our brother out of St. Louis, Missouri, Nation Auto Sales, LLC. He'll ship cars and trucks to you all across the country. Um, Engineers of Tomorrow, LLC, a STEM preschool in Dallas, Texas, uh, teaching young kings and queens and raising gods out of Dallas, Texas. Our brothers out of the MTS Car Bros out of Los Angeles, California. Any make, any model, any year, 30 to 50% off. Make sure we all go out there and support. Brother Kenneth, bow tie maker extraordinaire. He makes some of the best bow ties in the country. I have a lot of his and he'll ship them straight to you. Uh, Hip Hop Detox, Brother Enoch out of Chicago. Hip Hop Detox is a holistic and healthy approach to uh, empowering the youth to make it through society in high school, middle schools all across the country. Thank you very much, Brother Enoch and Hip Hop Detox. Sister Latasha Muhammad, Indianapolis, Queen is I, Poetry and Apparel. Make sure we support her amazing apparel and her poetry. Queen is I, Poetry and Apparel, Sister Latasha Muhammad. Sister Kanika uh, Yakub, she has a CBD uh, self uh line in healthcare out of Chicago, Illinois. Thank you, Sister Kanika Yakub, which is CBD uh, mom company in healthcare. So it's Alondra uh, L. Muhammad, my letter A book, children's book. Thank you very much. So many people in the comments showing love. Coming right back to uh, brother, uh, student minister Abdul. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you very much, Dr. Carter. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services in Chicago, Illinois. Make sure we support my father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdulsharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are on Amazon. Thank you all very much for your feedback and your constant positive uh, energy. Okay, uh, Brother Abdul, we have so many um, uh, questions in the comments, and we'll come to all of those very shortly. Um, uh, my next question, Brother Abdul, so when the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was arrested, what, what took place? Uh, why was he arrested? Why did he allow himself to be arrested? And how did the nation and the world respond to his arrest? So in, in 1942, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was arrested because uh, at that time, 
World War II was taking place, mm -hmm. the government was looking for um, people that were sympathizers or, in, you know, in so many words, for other uh, foreign countries. Uh, that is the, the charge that they charged him with. They didn't charge him with sedition. Um, I don't remember the name of the exact charge. I would have to look it up. But um, so in 1942, uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was letting black people know that they should not fight in America's unjust wars, right? Mm -hmm. And research, you had people who objected to war before, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there were people who objected, but when they were arrested, then they usually, they just went to war instead of going to jail. This was the first time black people objected to war and rather than going to war, they went to jail. So now the most Elijah Muhammad was arrested for that, right? They say he was arrested for uh, draft evasion, right? But he was already too old for the draft, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, and if you look at the report, there were people that were 60 years old because they raided the mosque and if I remember correctly, 83 people were arrested when the, when the uh, FBI raided the mosque. The most harm Elijah Muhammad was arrested in Washington, D.C. Uh, but when they raided the mosque in Chicago, they arrested 83. And some of them were 60, 70 years old. And they sent them to jail as well. So it had nothing to do with anybody evading the draft. It had everything to do with the fact that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was warning Black people at a time when they needed black people to join the military, not to go to war for the United States. So uh, the Muslims went to prison instead of going to war. And the most Muhammad Elijah Muhammad at that time went to prison for five years. He was in uh, Michigan, Milan, Michigan for five years. And, but even though this may have appeared as a, a negative thing, right? The yes, Bible, sir. all things work for good for those who love the Lord. And the yes, sir, yes, sir. Right. So now him going to prison for five years did a lot of things. One thing that it did was it allowed um, Islam to be in the prison because everywhere he went, he taught. Right. And when they transfer prisoners, right. And the other brothers and sisters that were arrested. So they were in prison teaching Islam. Right. So yes. now everywhere you go in America, every prison, there's Muslims in every prison. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that it did. When the most honorable Elijah Muhammad was arrested in 1942, uh, he was on the run from people that wanted to take his life, his own brothers and sisters, his own brothers and sisters in Islam, right? Yes, because he was chosen by Master Father Muhammad to be what they called the Supreme Minister, right? Because he was chosen by God, they were angry at God's choice. And instead of taking their anger out on God, they wanted to take it out on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So he was moving from city to city to preserve his own life, right? And the lives, uh, to preserve the lives of those that was chasing him, really. So that's a, so, but when he went to prison, right? And he was there five years. When he came out, all of those people who, uh, were the, I'm going to use the word pretenders, right? They, they, they were the pretenders. They wanted the spot that he was in. They wanted to be in his seat, right? Yes, sir. When he came out of prison, all of them were either dead or they went to something else, right? And when he came out, then he was the uh, undisputed leader, right? There was no challenge to his leadership in the nation. So what Allah did is that he cleared those who were not sincere. He cleared them out of the way so that when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad came out, then those people that were trying to take his spot were no longer there. So that's two, right? The third thing is when he went to prison in Michigan and he saw how the prisons were self-sustaining, right? They had everything they needed, right? They were like little cities, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That let him know, and it might, it might, I don't know how many people were in Milan, Michigan, but if it's 5,000, whatever, I don't know how many it was at that time. But the point is that it was self, they had their own farms, had their own, had everything, right? So this let him know that it would be easy for him to do something for self just like that, right? Right here in America, 
for black people because if the prisons were independent and then what well, what are we not in prison mm, mm, get, mm. right so but so those and, and you know i'm sure there are other insights that could come out of that those are the things that uh, a lot blessed me to see um but you know what it also shows brother that uh and i'll say this uh, it'll it so when the holy quran right says that to the messenger of god that you have to expand your breast right yes sir yes sir when a person expands their breast right when you inhale your breast expands right so you expand your breath so you can take in more air right and the air when the atoms are split up right then that gives you the energy to do what you got to do right yes sir because it's the oxygen that oxidizes the blood that gives you the energy right yes sir yes sir and Allah says in the holy quran to expand your breast right it means to take in more air right so you can do more work right so what did the most honorable Elijah Muhammad go into prison? What did that allow him to see? Now, this man is completely innocent, right? He's completely innocent of every charge that the enemy laid on him, but he's still in jail, right? Yes, sir. But that uh, expanded his breast for his brothers and sisters who were also in jail. Some of them might've been innocent, but some of them weren't, right? So that he would have a special place of love for those people, and he did, and the, so does the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, for those people, our people, that are locked behind bars. So fast forward to when Malcolm is in prison, right? And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad knows what it's like because he spent five years there, right? See, this is, this is what they don't show. They don't show the love that this man has for his people. They give you a caricature. So when you see any any uh, dealings in in the mainstream media between Malcolm X and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, it's always something adversarial. It's not a, a loving father son relationship like it really was. Yes, so sir. Yes, sir. He finds out from the brother of Malcolm that Malcolm is in prison, and if you write him, maybe you can convert him to Islam. And the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, knowing the pain of a black man being locked up innocently or not knowing the pain of being in prison away from your family, away from your wife, away from the people you love, being mistreated by the white folks in prison, knowing that pain, what did he do? He, he had a regular correspondence, not just with Malcolm, but with prisoners all over the country. Some of you got family in prison right now. And all you do is go on the internet and be like, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Nothing on their books. You don't look out for them. You don't go visit them, right? You just look at the picture and show show your friend. Yeah, there you go. He, yeah, they got him. <laughs> what they don't show is the love that this man had for Malcolm and all the other brothers and sisters that were locked up in prison. So I think that him going to prison, brother, did a lot of things. Um, you know, it looks like a negative but it ended up being a positive. And I gotta say this, cause I would be remiss if I didn't say this. When the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad went to prison, brother, the nation of Islam survived because a lot of the brothers were locked up. The only reason the nation of Islam survived those five years is because of mother Clara Muhammad and the sisters in the nation of Islam. We as the, the, the uh, followers of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we need to look at the life of Mother Clara and study her life. Yes, sir. Her life is an ex exemplary life that needs to be studied. Yes, sir. Be looked at. She needs to be honored. She needs to be respected. She yes, is the mother. She is the mother of the nation of Islam. She kept the nation of Islam alive, as well as the sisters, while the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the brothers were in prison on false charges of the enemy. We couldn't have got this far. We wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Mother Clara and the sisters in the nation. That's true for then, right? And it's true for Mother Khadija and the sisters in the nation of Islam right now. We would not be here and we owe our existence to these black women in the nation of Islam namely mother clara muhammad the wife of the most honorable elijah muhammad
Beautiful, brother. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Excellent. And Bob, do I got a quick? Um, I'm coming to so many of the comments. I just want to say in the comments, please can the only respond to positive stuff. We're not arguing in the comments. Uh, every for some reason, but I do edit. I I'm went to a white high school, white colleges. I never have white people come in my comments, and I'm feeling friends with them ever to disagree or argue or say silly stuff. It's always woke people or other type of people always starting. So that's why we can't never. In the comments, we only dealing with positivity. I'm gonna block everybody who got something negative to say later, but I just wanted to say that. We only dealing with positivity because as student minutes I do just deals with the truth. Any other any of that negative stuff is getting blocked. Um Brother Josh. Yes, sir. There's a lot of negative. I, I'm not reading the comments, but I already know because like I live on the planet, right? <laughs> negative things that have been said about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. There's a lot of negative things. And you know, there are people who love to repeat those negative things. Uh, I don't have a problem with dealing with none of them because we know the truth of this man's life. Uh, so, and, and I, but I know you don't want to. You know, the show is not about negativity. Yes, but sir. there's nothing that you can say negative about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that we don't have the truth. Because the reason you have something negative to say is because the enemy of all black people right and and the enemy of all oppressed people all over the world they put the negativity out there for you to say right so there's never been a leader ever in the history of us in america that was truly for us that the white man talked favorably about while that leader was present you go all the way back to nat turner i pulled up the newspaper reports from when Nat Turner led his rebellion. Do you think the white man has something to say positive about Nat Turner in the newspapers from when Nat Turner led his rebellion? Absolutely not. So who you gonna believe? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. He's a prophet. That's what they said about he think he's he's crazed, right? All this other stuff. Who you gonna believe? You gonna believe the enemy? Some of you will because you love white folks, right? I understand. It is what it is. It's not a problem. Anything that you have negative to say, right? we can defend it because we know the truth of it but we're trying to keep everything positive but maybe on another show on another show <laughs> praise be to Allah. and thank everybody for the positive comment I'm on, I'm on twitter i'm on instagram y'all can holler at me all the negative people i'm not like i'm not a ghost i'm right here you can holler at me you can send me a little <laughs> i have no problem with that because this man the most honorable Elijah muhammad is god's man if you read the holy quran Every prophet in the Holy Quran that uh, Allah cleared them of the false charges of the enemy, every last one of them. So do you think that if Allah raises a man up today, that the enemy is not going to, if he, if, if, if he claimed everybody, every prophet, right? They lied on Abraham, right? They lied on Noah, right? Said he had sex with his own daughter. Uh, had uh, uh, lusted after his son. They lied on Lot and said that Lot had sex with his own daughters. They lied on Solomon and said Solomon was a devil worshiper. They lied on Jesus and said he was the devil. They lied on prophet Muhammad. Every prophet, they lied on the mother of Jesus and said that she was an unrighteous woman. Every prophet, every messenger, every man of God that he raised up, the enemy lied on him. But if you read the Holy Quran, they said that Aaron was the one that led the children of Israel to worship the golden calf. Allah clears every prophet and every messenger of every lie right there in the Holy Quran. So you think because you got some lie from the enemy about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a holy man. Yeah, I said it. A holy man from God himself. That what? That's, every prophet's been lied on. That's nothing nothing to us because we know the truth of it this man you can you can be mad you can hate him it don't they don't take nothing away from what he did right you're not taking anything away from him you're actually losing because everybody that uh listened and learned from him they became greater whether they became a muslim or not this it don't even matter and 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 those of who have all these negative things to say all the people you look, look up to i have people who got tupac shirts on right you're talking about they don't like Elijah Muhammad. You got a Tupac shirt on. You know what are you talking about? Come on, man. 
So it is what it is, brother. Uh, so I'm just going to put that out there, brother. Every man of God, right, woman of God, the, the enemy had false charges, right, lies about that person, and Allah cleared them in the Holy Quran. Every black leader, you think that they said good things about Marcus Garvey? No, go get the news reports from when Marcus Garvey was alive. See, the enemy has hidden that from you, right? Go get the news reports of what they used to write about Marcus Garvey, right? They didn't have nothing good to say about Marcus Garvey. So, but you have accepted the white man's lies as truth. And that's why you have negative things to say about the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, a man who only did good for black people. That's all he did. His whole life was good for black people. And all of us, whether we want to admit it or not, we benefit from the work of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. But some of us, uh hate him without a cause but jesus was hated without a cause and he is jesus so let's keep it moving praise be to <laughs> excellent and so many so many people giving you so much good uh, good feedback and positive feedback on the people's podcast uh, the negative yes sir yes sir my my next question uh is malcolm x and the minister and the most honorable Elijah muhammad's love for him you say he loved him like a son right so, so what? It was positive. It was positivity there. It was love. It wasn't like no, no. Honorable, and I'm gonna just say this uh, because you know we always get these uh, questions. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X had a father-son relationship. Uh, this is this is according to Malcolm's own words. This is according to uh, the children of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Imam Warbdin Muhammad said that the day, the day that Malcolm X got out of prison. The day he got out of prison, he came to the home of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he said he was still in a little prison. You know, they give you some clothes to wear. Yes, and they said he still smelled like jail. And he's in the home of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad, when Malcolm X was the minister in Philadelphia and he was painting houses, right? And he said, do you want to paint the homes of men or do you want to paint the hearts of men with the truth? This is what inspired Malcolm X to become the man that we love, the Malcolm X that we love. All of you who love Malcolm, I came in the nation because I read his autobiography. That's what caused me to want to join the nation. So I love Malcolm. The Malcolm you love is the Malcolm that was in the nation of Islam for 12 years. All the speeches you quote, all, that's the Malcolm you love. That's the Malcolm you fell in love with, is the Malcolm X in the nation of Islam. So, brother, they had a father-son relationship. Now, I have children. Some of you have children, right? And when you are in a relationship with your child, there comes a time where you have to correct your child. Like, I, I beat my children, right? <laughs> they beat yours as well. I don't abuse them. Uh, for the FBI agent that's on here, you know. Uh, you know, as parents, we discipline our children, right? And I know when I was disciplined by my mother, who's still alive, who I love tremendously, who I cherish every spanking, every discipline, every, I, I cherish it now, right? I didn't cherish it then. Uh, brother, I used to go in my room and talk about how I hate my mother and she make me sick and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm sure some of you did too. I can't stand her, I'm gonna run away. All this crazy stuff, because I was a child. My brain was not fully developed, so I didn't understand what my mother would i didn't understand what my mother was doing for me by what my mother was doing to me right yes sir as i grew then i started to understand so when i now and, and it really didn't hit me right the value of my mother did not hit me until i had children right the even my father you know a lot of us as men we don't have close relationships with our father which and i don't but the value i didn't really realize the value of my mother and father until i became a father and had children of my own so i called my mother and i apologized and i called my father and i apologized because now as i grew i was able to see the value of both of them right none of our parents are perfect right my made mistakes but to me right the good that they did is so far outweighs the mistakes that they made. They did the best they could 
with what they had, right? I don't even, the mistakes don't even matter. So now, this is the type of relationship that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X had. They had a father-son relationship. There were times where Malcolm X had to be corrected and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad corrected him like a father. Malcolm took that correction, right? Like all, all of the students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. The thing that has been a painful wound in the black community, right? Even to this day, is when, Mal when Malcolm X left the nation, right? Because when Malcolm left the nation, he was not on good terms with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And when he let, he was angry with his teacher, right? And part of the reason that Malcolm was angry is because you had, you know, you brought up the movie Judas and the Black Messiah. Yes, it's because you had people in the nation that were working for the FBI, right? That were feeding things to Malcolm X, right? And feeding things about Malcolm X to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? And so what this did, it skewed Malcolm's perception of his teacher, right? Because he thought, and, and not only that, you also had people who were jealous, who were in the nation, that were jealous and envious of Malcolm's success. Now, I know what you're saying. See, see, there it go, there it go, right there. No. It's nothing wrong with the nation. Yes, sir. LeBron James, who's the greatest basketball player in the history of the NBA. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> And why did I say that? Because he opened a school for black children. <laughs> Magic didn't do that. None of them other brothers did that. So stop. LeBron is the greatest. So now you have players right now. I, I know I'm going to get some hate for that, brother. It's okay. You have players right now who are in the NBA, right? Who are making money, right? Who got a shoe deal, all this other kind of stuff, right? And are jealous and envious of LeBron right now in the NBA. You have people that are in the music business who are making money, making videos, doing all this, but are jealous of Jay-Z or jealous of Drake, right? Because if Drake, if Drake drops, drops a song right now, it's gonna be on the on the Billboard Top 100. If Drake gets on the track and just call, ho, ho, it's gonna be a hit. He's gonna make millions, right? So it is people who are envious of Drake, right? That's I'm more lyrical, or whatever, right? <laughs> so now. You mean to tell me there were people in the nation that were envious of Malcolm? Yes, because that is part of the human condition. When you're an undeveloped human being, you're not spiritually developed, and you see somebody that has a gift or a talent that you have or wish you could have, when you're not spiritually developed and you don't have love for the other person, right? Then what comes up in the heart is the disease of envy, right? So that is in any, it's in it, like it's in your house. Your brother might be envious of you because you got a Cadillac and you know, it, it, it happens wherever you have human beings who are not spiritually developed and there's not enough love between them, the disease of envy and jealousy can creep in. So you had people in the nation that were envy and envious and jealous of Malcolm and the enemy behind the scenes manipulated all of that, right? and turn Malcolm over time, right? Against the man that raised him from the dead, gave him life and put him before the world. And so now you may say, I know, cause y'all have all these kind of excuses. Well, you know, uh, cause there's so many, you know, Malcolm X found out that there were white Muslims. And when he found out it was white Muslims, he was like, well, you know, Elijah Muhammad said the white man was a devil and couldn't be a Muslim now. But what they didn't tell you, Malcolm X, when the people from the Middle East would come to Chicago, Malcolm would be at the table. There were white Muslims there. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X was the minister in New York and he would receive the dignitaries that would come to visit the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. They were white Muslims. When Malcolm X went to, he didn't go to Mecca in 1963 the first time. He went to Mecca in the 1950s, the first time. And when he went to Mecca in 1959, there were white Muslims then. Well, he didn't go to Mecca. He went to the Middle East. And he saw white Muslims then. So it wasn't like his first time seeing white Muslims when he went to Mecca. The second time, right? Come on, man. What are we talking about? So, brother, 
the uh, most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So the, the controversy comes in when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad took wives from the believing community. And this is a controversy because different people perceive that differently, right? Uh, it's not something that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted to do necessarily. It's something that he had to do for the future of the nation. Uh, his wife, Mother Clara Muhammad, he loved her tremendously. They were married, I believe, in 1919 in the racist state of Georgia. That's where they got married. They came to Detroit together. They were part of the Great Migration. She, she was his wife. She loved him. He loved her. When the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, before he came in the nation of Islam, see, this is what's not told before he came in the nation of Islam and, and heard the teachings, he was an alcoholic and he would be so drunk that he would be laid out on the railroad tracks. It was his wife, Clara Muhammad, Mother Clara, that came and drug him off the railroad tracks so he wouldn't die and brought him back to the house. It was his wife, sister, Mother Clara Muhammad that introduced him to Master Five Muhammad. She is the one that told him, you need to come and hear this man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That love story between him and his wife is a love story that has never been told, right? And the love between him and his student, Brother Malcolm, is a love story that has not been told. Mm -hmm. The enemy wants to give you the caricature of a man that they will say, well, he was a lustful man. He's trying to get all these women. Come on, man, stop. Or that he was a pedophile, stop. You just repeating lies that you heard from the enemy. Many of the wives of the most, I know them personally. I know them. These are righteous women. They not in the club. They not twerking. They not, no, none of that. These are righteous women. I know them personally. They have produced righteous children that now are helping the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. So when the controversy between Malcolm and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad happened, Malcolm took what he learned about the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's domestic life, right? Because he was angry with his teacher, because he thought that his teacher was responsible for these people that were jealous and envious of him, right? And he also believed some of the things that was being fed to him by the people that were working for the FBI that were in the nation, right? So, but now I don't want people to misjudge Malcolm at the same time because we're human beings. And as human beings, we have feelings and emotions. We have to deal with them properly. But here's a man that was working his whole life for the nation. And to have people that, that say they're your brothers that are envious of you and jealous of you, that is a very painful thing to have to experience, right? That's very painful, right? The most honorable Elijah Muhammad experienced that same pain. So Malcolm was not experiencing something. They wanted to kill the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So Malcolm wasn't experiencing something that the teacher himself did not experience and that he rose above those emotions, right? And became a greater teacher and had a deeper spiritual understanding of human beings. So everybody got to go through that. This is a trial that if you want to uh, be a spiritual leader of our people, you have to go through trial. You're going to be a trial. You're going to have to go through trials just to live on the planet. Nobody escapes that, right? So when Malcolm mishandled the knowledge that he had of the domestic life of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and took the knowledge that he had of his teacher's domestic life to his to the enemy of both of us, right? Of Malcolm as well as the most honorable Elijah. Mike Wallace ain't a friend of black people, right? The media is not a friend of black people, right? Look at how they portray us in the media. You mean to tell me that the people that portray us as animals and monkeys, that this is the person that you took the knowledge of the domestic life of the most honorable Elijah moment to? And let me say this, because I didn't say this before. Uh, the FBI, every article that was written about the nation of Islam in the 40s, well, I'm going to say the 50s and 60s and 70s, all the way up until today, every article that was written about the nation came through the FBI 
the FBI either wrote the article themselves and gave it to the newspaper to publish because they, they're trying to create a narrative, right? They either wrote the article and gave it to the journalist, so-called journalist, right? Look, put your name on this, Ed Montgomery, right? <laughs> or they, the, the journalist would write the article, give it to the FBI. They would add certain information that they wanted in the article and then give it back to the journalist. So the public perception of the nation in the 50s, 60s, and 70s in the mainstream media was created by the FBI. This is just a fact. It's right there in the FBI file. So now you mean to tell me that you're going to take the man who is the, uh, the messenger from God to Black people, you're going to take that man's domestic life that he shared with his son, Malcolm, and you're going to take that to the enemy of all of us? And then you expect the people who love Elijah Muhammad not to react to that? Come on, man. I have a brother. I have a brother. We slept in the bed. He taught me how to talk to girls. You know what I'm saying? Everything. We played video games together. We programmed video games. We, we stole comic books. We went to 7-Eleven and stole. We did all of that stuff together, right? And if my blood brother was in the public saying all manner of things about my mama, it's going to be a problem. And it ain't going to be no conversation. It ain't going to be no talking. It ain't going to be no man. It's, it might start with talking. But you got to clean up all that stuff that you, now you may say, well, is it true? Yeah, some things may be true, right? Because it's things that's true about you, right? That's listening, that you don't want in the public, right? And if somebody who was a friend, who was a brother, who was a, a son, like we could take the example of, what's the brother's name? He's the gospel singer. His son recorded him. Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin, right? We could take Kirk, like when I heard that, I was like, man, what, what is he apologizing for? What is, why is Kirk Franklin even apologizing? No, this is a son that ate from this man's table, that benefited from this man's life work, that's driving because of this man, eating because of this man, dressed because of this man, and you have a disagreement, and you're going to record your father that is your benefactor, and then put it in front of the world to make your father look bad? Absolutely, I side with Kirk Franklin in that. <laughs> I'm just saying, but, but that's the same thing. It's the same dynamic, right? But just because he cussed at his son, does that mean he don't love his son? Mm -hmm. I cussed at my son. <laughs> I, I still love him. <laughs> I know I'm giving too much information. Right? <laughs> Sisters, I'm just saying that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is a man who we don't know the real truth of and what he did. And the only thing we get is the lies from the enemy. This is why the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, like our people hate him and don't even know why. It's like, man, I don't even like that man. Like, you don't even know who he is. What's his name? I don't know his name, but I don't like him, right? Like, come on, man, what are we talking about? Because we've been fed all of these lies uh, by the enemy. So brother, on this note with Malcolm, and I know this ain't the Malcolm X thing, but I, I mean, <laughs> when uh, Malcolm took what he knew of his teacher's domestic life to the enemy of all of us, the brothers in the nation and sisters had a natural reaction to that. Um, and Malcolm at that time uh, was in tremendous pain. And, and when you're in pain, you don't always think properly, right? And make proper decisions. And in that case, he didn't make a proper decision. Uh, people will say when, you know, that Elijah Muhammad had him killed, right? That's not true, right? Uh, you know, and when I first came in the nation, that's all I heard. Elijah Muhammad had him killed. Now, now everybody says the minister did it, right? I'm like, well, what happened to Elijah Muhammad? I thought he did it, right? Because, and the reason is because we go with whatever white folks say. When, when uh, in the early 90s, when I came in the nation, everybody was saying Elijah Muhammad had Malcolm killed because that's what white folks said. Now, when the white man say, well, Minister Farrakhan had him killed, now all, now all the people saying, the quote, so-called woke people are saying that, that the minister had Malcolm X killed. But there's, they have no evidence for either one. There is no evidence for either one. But there is evidence that the FBI had that whole thing set up. This is not that, uh, you know, this is not that show. But I just wanted to put that out there yes, uh, regarding that because he is a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Excellent. Okay, Rob, do an excellent job. And your former student and my former classmate, Ali Knox, is watching and showing love. 
um, and so many other people, but shout out to Ali for uh, being in the class with you in your early days when you were going super hard. If y'all didn't, if y'all didn't have Rabbi Abdul as a teacher, MUI, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know what it was like to be under that kind of intense pressure. Um, okay, Rabbi Abdul, my next question for you is: the books that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave, why, why, like you have Hadith to Live Behind You, why are they are they relevant today? Should we still like people still people still read them? And uh, why is it so important that he wrote books? So, brother, I would say that it's absolutely important that we read the books of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because the knowledge uh, is on a whole nother level. So I'll just say that. Uh, and I'll say that uh, when the most honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote these books, right? So he didn't sit down and write message to the black men or how to eat to live or any of the books. They were articles that he wrote in the 1950s mm -hmm. in the Pittsburgh Courier and other newspapers, and but as well as Muhammad Speaks, right? And what the followers did is they compiled the articles based on subject matter, right, into books. So this is why, like, if you read How to Eat to Live, uh, and I've read it many times, uh, some people may think, well, it's contradictory. And it's really not because he didn't sit down and write it as a book. He wrote an article here, right? He wrote an article there, wrote an article here, wrote an article there. And some of those, he might have been answering a question that a person had about a previous article, but the followers compiled those articles into books. And that's how we have Message to the Black Man, uh, How to Eat to Live. Uh, but all of, those all of those books, brother, we absolutely need to read. And if you read what he writes, I bear witness that you will see that you would think that he wrote these things yesterday because truth never gets old. You read the Holy Quran every year for Ramadan. It's like, I read it last year and I know I read this, but because I've grown, right? We all, we're all growing, right? Now my perception of what I read a year ago is totally different, right? Yeah. But the truth that is there will not expire. You follow what I'm saying? It's the same way with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's words. Um, in the book, How to Eat to Live, you know, this book, these two books, he wrote two books on how to eat to live that um, I would suggest and recommend to everybody because this is the diet that you should follow. Wait, let me take that back. It's not a diet. It's a way of life that you should follow. So I would definitely recommend uh, getting How to Eat to Live, book one and book two, um, as soon as you can. Okay, excellent. Thank everybody for continuing to watch the People's Podcast. You're getting so many comments. Uh, I have a quick question. The most, um, I think this is probably the most important question I'm going to ask today outside of who is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but 1975, the most honorable uh, Elijah Muhammad departs. This becomes a trial, of course, for society, Black people. The most honorable Muhammad is far kind, rebuilds the nation, and his founding things that he later says is that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is physically alive. Uh, what do you believe about that? And which, what, which, why is that important for people in, in 2021 to believe? So brother, I mean, that's, that's an excellent question. There are two verses in the Holy Quran, right? So when we started, you asked me, who is the most honorable Elijah Muhammad? And I said, he is the Messiah and the exalted Christ, right? So uh, when you read the scriptures in the Holy Quran, right? as well as the Bible, there is a period in Jesus' life, right? Uh, the crucifixion, right? And then there is uh, when Jesus is exalted, right? Yes, sir. And the most honor, there are two verses in the Holy Quran that talk about Jesus, the Messiah, son of Mary, right? How the enemy wanted to kill him. And it says that Allah will cause you to die, right? and then raise you to himself, right? So this is the Holy Quran talking about the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that this scripture in the Holy Quran is not talking about the Jesus of 2000 years ago. Yes, sir. We know that Jesus of 2000 years ago, uh, according to Christian theology, he only lived to be 36, right? Uh, and according to Muslims, or let me say this, according to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, he lived to be 33, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 
the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in the true history of Jesus tells us how Jesus, the historical Jesus died, right? Yes, sir. And the way the historical Jesus died is he was killed by a Roman centurion, right? And when he was killed, he was killed in the form of the cross, right? So now I'm giving y'all the quick version because you can read that for yourself. Yes, so now, but the question, if you are a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, because see, there's a disagreement among the most honorable Elijah Muhammad students on whether or not the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is still physically alive. You will have people say the most honorable Elijah Muhammad never said that he was Jesus. And that's not true. There's a table talk that you could listen to where uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says clearly to the, it's, it's a meeting of the East Coast Regional Ministers, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is there. And the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the, the ministers is saying that we're the real Christians. And, uh, and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says that he is the real Jesus to the East Coast Regional Ministers, right? Yes, sir. And then he says, I shouldn't say that because you won't love me anymore. And then, and then Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan responds oh yes we will dear apostle oh yes we will so that's the table talk that's a matter of a historical record because you have people that say he never said that he was jesus but we have it right there you read the table talks right and not pardon me not table talks in the theology of time he says that he is the elijah of your bible and the muhammad of your holy quran right so now, if he's the Elijah of your Bible, right, in that same theology of time, he said that there is no death for Elijah. We talk, now, I'm just saying for those students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'm just giving you things of his own words that you can look at where all throughout the theology of time, right, all throughout the theology of time, he's dropping hints of who he really is, right? In the very first one, he said that they didn't describe me as a big sheep. They described me as a little lamb. So what are we talking about? So that means you gotta go to the book of Revelations and see who the little lamb is. The lamb who appeared as though he had been slain from the foundation of the world before the 24 elders and the one sitting on the throne yes sir not a big sheep that's before them it's a little lamb and he's telling you right there in the theology of time that he is the little lamb well he's well, either he's lying right and he's not the little lamb he's not the lamb that escaped the death plot and because he escaped the death plot appeared as though he had been slain if he's not that, then what are, what are we talking about? We just need to do something else, right? <laughs> yes, sir. But I'm talking to the students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad who may disagree with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan in saying that he's still alive. Now, if we talk to Muslims, right? You have that scripture in the Holy Quran, right? Two places in the Holy Quran where it says that Jesus escaped a death plot right well pardon me that jesus well he was a death plot right and that he was exalted into the presence of allah and we know that that was not the jesus of two thousand years ago right we know that right mm -hmm. so now the question is who do those scriptures right refer to i said in the beginning that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is the Messiah, right? The word Messiah means one who is anointed, right? Uh, it means it comes from an Arabic word, uh, al masi which means one who is wiped over with something like oil, right? When you anoint people, you anoint them with oil, right? So now it also means a world traveler, right? This is what the word means, right? So when we look at uh, this word Messiah and who actually fits the description, there's a 
a verse, not a verse, but it is a verse. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18, right? That gives a prophecy of the Messiah and says that the Messiah would be a man like Moses, right? So now the uh, Christians will say, Jesus of 2000 years ago was a man like Moses, right? The Muslims will say that prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago was a man like Moses, right? Yes, sir. But what we will say and back it up with actual facts is that, and it's not taking anything away from Jesus or Muhammad, but that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is actually the man like Moses. That's what we will say. Because if you look at the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and you compare him to Moses, then the comparisons are like right in line, right? I'm gonna give you a few. I don't know how much time we have. So Moses was born in the civilization or in Egypt and his people were enslaved, right? Yes, sir. The people in the time of Prophet Muhammad were not enslaved and were not under an oppressive Pharaoh. That was not the case. The people in the time of Jesus were not enslaved in physical bondage, right? Under an oppressive Pharaoh. Now they were under an oppressive government, right? The Roman government, but they were not in slavery, right? So now the uh, Allah raised Moses up from among the children of Israel and enslaved people, right? And talk to Moses face to face, as it says in the book of Exodus, right? Uh, as a man speaketh to his friend. You don't get in the Bible where Jesus talked to uh, God face to face, right? Yes, sir. You don't get where Prophet Muhammad talked to God face to face, right? Yes, sir. Uh, but of course, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad did tell us, right, that he spoke with God and talked to him, what? Face to face, right? So now you have Moses was born among a people that were enslaved, right? Uh, Moses came from among the slaves. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad came from among the slaves, right? Moses spoke the language of his oppressor. Prophet Muhammad didn't speak any language of the oppressor. So Prophet Muhammad spoke Arabic, right? Jesus spoke Arabic and Jesus spoke Hebrew, but the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, because he was enslaved, then he spoke the language of the oppressor, right? Yes, sir. So now, the people who were in power during the time of Moses was, was Pharaoh and uh, the Egyptians. I'm using that word in quotes, right? Yes, sir. The, in the life of Prophet Muhammad, the Quraysh, who he was at opposition with were not some other people that were oppressing the Arabs. They were, Prophet Muhammad was a part of their family. So this was a conflict between family, right? Yes, sir. Uh, during the time of Jesus, you did have an oppressive Roman regime, right? At that time, when you read in the history of Moses, when Moses came to the burning bush, right? And uh, God gave Moses his commission Moses was like, look, you know, I have a speech impediment, right? So send, you know, send Aaron, my brother, because I can't really talk that well, right? You don't have in the uh, life of Jesus where Jesus had a speech impediment, right? You don't have in the uh, history of Prophet Muhammad where Prophet Muhammad had a speech impediment, right? Uh, but you do in the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because we know that he grew up in the South and we know that he only went to the fourth grade, right? that he did not, he was not a master, right? He was a master, right? Uh, he was not a master in the traditional way of the English language, right? Yes, sir. So now, what am, why am I saying this? Because when we lay over the history of Moses, right? You had, uh, Moses came to a people that were uncivilized and needed strong law, right? In order to get them civilize right and make them uh i'm going to use the word worthy that's not the word i want but you know make them acceptable in the eyes of god right so now jesus didn't come with a strong law like moses right he founded everything that uh moses said but jesus said 
that the greatest law, right, is that you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and that you love your brother like you love yourself. On these two hang all the laws and all the prophets. That's what Jesus taught. Spiritual law, right? Deeply spiritual. Muhammad did bring a strong law to civilize the Arabs, right? But now in every category where we compare Moses to Jesus, to Muhammad, to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, in every category, they match with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but not with the Moses of 4,000 years ago or the Jesus of, two, pardon me, I mean the, the Jesus of 2,000 years ago or the Muhammad of 1,400 years ago, right? Okay. So now, brothers and sisters, uh, the prophecy of Deuteronomy 18, 18, that he would be a man like Moses is clearly the most uh, honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm saying this to those who follow him, as well as those of us who follow the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We know these things. Uh, so if this man is the man like Moses and he fulfills that, right? He fulfills uh, what we read about in the Bible about Elijah, right? He fulfills aspects of what we read about in the Bible about Jesus, right? Okay. Then when it comes to the end of his mission, right? And we know that all through the mission that the enemy wanted to kill him all through the mission. It's all there in the FBI files. Everything they wanted to do, they failed, right? Okay. But at the end of his mission among us, right? There was a death plot, right? And li listen to what the most harmful Elijah Muhammad said. He said on a television show, he said, brother, uh, well, he didn't say brother. He said, uh, regarding the Holy Quran, he said two thirds of the Holy Quran is for me, right? And one third is for another man, but I'm gonna let that other man worry about his part, right? So now what does that mean? If two thirds is for him, well, if we read the history of Prophet Muhammad, we know that two thirds of the Holy Quran was revealed in Mecca to Prophet Muhammad while he was under tremendous persecution from the enemy, right? During that time of persecution, it got to, it got so bad that all of the enemies of Muhammad, right? Said that all the, all the tribes that were against Muhammad, they got a youth from every tribe. And they said, look, we're gonna send a youth from every tribe to go and kill Muhammad. Now this is at the end of Muhammad's time in Mecca. The reason they chose a youth from every tribe is so that no one tribe could be blamed for his murder. So when they sent the youth to go and kill Muhammad, Allah had already revealed to Muhammad the death plot, right? So uh, Ali, I mean, pardon me, Muhammad asked uh, Ali, who was his cousin, to sleep in his place in his bed. And Muhammad escaped, right? And when the youth came to kill Muhammad, Ali was in the bed. So now the enemies of Muhammad were looking for Muhammad. Muhammad was gone, right? Some thought Muhammad was dead, right? Because he was trying to get to Medina where the other Muslims had migrated to. So some people were saying that Muhammad was dead, right? They didn't know where Muhammad was, right? So Muhammad hid in a cave, right? And they were searching for him. And when he hid in the cave, then a spider spun a web that covered up the face of the cave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the people that were searching for Muhammad came to look for him. They were going in the cave, but then the spider web was over the cave. And they said, now he can't be in here because there's a spider web here, right? So then they left, right? So now nobody knows where Muhammad is for three days, right? Now, three is the number of trial, very significant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three days later, Muhammad shows up in Medina, right? Yes, sir. And when Muhammad shows up in Medina, he is not only the spiritual leader of Medina, right? But he is also the political leader or the king of the oasis, right? Why am I saying this? Because if two thirds of it, the other one third of the Holy Quran was revealed in Medina, right? And in Medina is where you get the rules and the laws of how to live in Islamic life, right? Those are those revelations that you get in the Holy Quran. So now I'm, I'm saying that to say, if two thirds of the book was for him, right? And one third was another man. Once he did his two third, right? 
what happened at the end of that in the life of the prophet? It was a death plot, right? The prophet escaped. Some thought he was dead. Some didn't know where he was, right? But then three days later, what happens? The prophet shows up, right? Three years after the most armed Elijah Muhammad escaped the death plot, what happened? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the man that the other one third is for, he shows up to fulfill that other one third. So now brother, uh, I know that it, this is like uh, controversial or whatever the case may be, but all it requires is a little more study for us to understand that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad fulfilled that scripture in the Holy Quran of Jesus being exalted into the presence of Allah, right? Uh, as well as that scripture in the Bible of the Jesus in the Bible that was also uh, resurrected and uh, on the right hand of the father and the lamb that looked as though he had been slain from the foundation of the world, but he's standing in front of the 24 elders and the one that's sitting on the throne, right? That is all the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. So I don't know if I was too deep, but that was a great question. <laughs> um, but I would say brother that uh, in, in regards to that, that really what we need to do is just study. You know what I'm saying? To kind of understand that uh, Brother Jabril wrote an excellent book, Is It Possible That the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad Is Still Physically Alive? In that book is a letter from the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad where he says that he knew that there was gonna be a death plot. And he said that he knew that Allah would get him through the death plot. And if Allah had not assured him that he would escape, that he would have no hope. Uh, these are things for students of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to study and learn from. Beautiful. Excellent. So many people are commenting and liking and saying teach and putting fire emojis. Oh, and and, and it's, you can never go too deep when you deal with a subject like this. Uh, right. uh, Minister Abdul, you, uh, everybody's saying great teachings, good teachings, powerful. This is exactly what uh, good teachings, brother. This is what we needed to uh, hear. Uh, today, uh, student minister Abdul, you did an excellent job. Um, for a subject dealing with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad like this, we can go for hours, but we want to uh, keep it um, to right now is good. We want to come back with the permission of student minister Abdul to deal with who is the most honorable minister Louis Barakhan. Uh, very soon, we'll let you all know once we confirm the date. But I want to thank student minister Abdul for giving us this information and this inspiration. For us, I wrote so many notes that I have to go back and study uh, myself and hope that other people who are mostly put on YouTube go back and study as well. Thank you, Brother Abdul, for doing this, uh, giving us this great information and giving us, uh, teaching us on who the most honorable Elijah Muhammad it is and in, in introducing to some who don't know, because a lot of people in my uh, format don't have no idea. That's why I like how you make it plain. And for those who do know, you took it to where you need to take it to, to reassure us and remind us of who he is. I want to say all of us who are students of the most humble Elijah Muhammad, like uh, we may not agree on everything and we don't have to agree on everything, uh, but we do agree uh, on the truth that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught and teaches. And we should be brothers and sisters based on that. Like there are other uh, brothers and sisters who love the most honorable Elijah Muhammad who may disagree with certain things that we may say about him. That doesn't stop you from being our brother and sister his children we're all the children of the most honorable elijah muhammad and if you are a child of the honorable elijah muhammad then i have to love you because that's our father so it's like like there's no animosity you know we don't have to we can still love each other even if we don't agree on everything because we're all students and children of this great teacher beautiful praise be to a lot well, once again, thank you all. Some people sending a greeting. Some people, I mean, it's a lot of love. We're going to put this on YouTube so people can share it. Yes, uh, this is uh, Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Thank you very much again, Student Minister Abdul Muhammad, and all of you all who watched. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Thank you.